What is up, my imagination connoisseurs? RMB coming at you here on December 26th, the day after Christmas. I hope Santa or Krampus, 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 of course, Krampus, Krampus was good to you. I, I hope whether you, you children were naughty or nice that you got whatever it was that was coming to you. Uh, I wanted to talk about home video. Uh, this year, we had uh, an amazing plethora of fantastic home video releases on a wide spectrum of films and topics. And, you know, I'm always saying when I'm on the John Campia show or I'm doing the Weekly Hero with John, and I've been saying this since I was on Collider's Heroes since 2015, we live in a wondrous time where we are getting amazing stuff all the time. Uh, it's a great time to be alive. I, I've been involved with home entertainment since I was 13 years old uh, in 1980 when I got my first VCR for my bar mitzvah. That's all I wanted. That's what I got for my bar mitzvah, an RCA VFT 625 with the piano keys. And the very first video cassettes I ever owned were John Carpenter's Halloween, which was on Meta before it became Media, Home Entertainment, and it was Charlie Band's video company. Mita was the name of his first wife, and when things went south in that relationship, um, he changed the name to Media, which was very cool. By the way, there's Gilbert. He'll be passing by in and out. Uh, he had a great holiday. I got. I, you want to see what Gilbert got from me and uh, my girlfriend Elizabeth for Christmas? Check this out. This is what Eliz. Uh, this is what we got him. Check, check that out. I don't even know what it is, but boy, he loves it. It's a giant bone. So <clears throat> anyway, that's what Gilbert got for Christmas, and he loves it. I don't think he loves it as much as eating the wrapping paper, but that's okay. Anyway, so I've been involved with home video for a long time, and, and when I was a kid, for most of my young life, I wished that we could recreate the this the experience of going to the movies in the home. See, they're they're gonna help. Gilbert is now gnawing on his bone, and uh, we never could because in the United States we had NTSC video, which was the video standard that was created when the the inception of television occurred in I guess the late forties, and it was terrible. The most you could get out of it was five hundred and twenty five lines of resolution. We basically saw on TV two hundred and fifty lines of resolution and now we're with high definition video we see six times that and with 4k way 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 beyond that and uh one of the great things about today is we now have 4k and when you're going to make a true 4k video they have to go back to the original camera negative if they're doing it right sometimes they just give us 2k upscales because a lot of fin uh, films were not finished like the lord of the rings films were not finished they were not mastered in 4k they were only mastered in 2k but anyway i wanted to talk about all of they're not necessarily my top 10 like the greatest they're just my favorite releases of the year that i i feel very fortunate and i i, I feel that it's amazing that we we have these particular releases and the reason i wanted to do this is i i've been a fan of a, of a youtuber named sean c phillips uh he's a guy a lot of a lot of people famously remember him as this guy who weighed like 400 pounds, who, who is now down to 190. But every week, he does DVD and Blu-ray shopping videos. He reviews stuff. And I've run into him occasionally at conventions like Monster Palooza. And I just, I love the guy. I, I think what he's been doing and how he's diligently been uploading these videos for, for you know, the better part of 10 years now, I think. I, I just, I love his videos. I love his, his enthusiasm. So in honor of Sean C. Phillips and the work that he's been doing, I figured I'd do my favorite releases of the year for 2018 on home video. And I'm going to start with two discs that came out at the end of 2017 that um, I didn't talk about, but I'm, I never really talk about home video releases, even though it's a huge interest of mine. I've worked in home video. I've been producing uh, special features since 1999. And uh, so anyway, I wanted to talk about that. The first of the two videos I want to I, I want to mention that I haven't mentioned before. Are, first of all, Dario Argento's Suspiria. Now, of course, we got the remake this year, but this uh, Don May of Synapse, Synapse Films 
this was a labor of love for him and it was many years in the making and this is a transfer i mean when i was bootlegging videotapes and i was a bootlegger in the 80s getting a great copy of suspiria was something that we only dreamed of and now in the end of 2017 synapse films put out this copy this version of suspiria it is unbelievable the transfer is amazing i never thought i'd i'd live in a world where something like this was even possible if you like this film and if you if you've never seen it or if you love it uh this is an essential release everybody should get this it's amazing uh everyone at synapse films and don may should be given uh, a huge congratulations for the Hercule herculean task they they had of remastering this with all the different sound uh, versions of the film and what they what they went through there's a great piece on the restoration of the sound of this film really amazing stuff give it up for don may support synapse they're doing the lord's work now not to be outdone there is a company called vinegar syndrome which by the way is one of my favorite uh names for a home video label ever and vinegar syndrome is of course what happens to film prints old film prints as they deteriorate they they start smelling like vinegar and vinegar syndrome puts out you know they put out a lot of, of of sex films they put out a lot of weird lost exploitation movies they put out a movie this year called pets that stars ed bishop who played ed straker on ufo that i i'd never seen i'd never even heard of it i bought it because they put it out so vinegar syndrome is a great company but again like don may's synapse doing suspiria vinegar syndrome put out this at the end of last year as a special edition and then they put it out this year as a standard edition slava Sukerman's liquid sky now if you've never seen this film it came out in the early 80s and it was made by it's the one and only film made by slava Sukerman, uh and, and the film is literally here here's the plot uh, an alien spacecraft the size of a dinner plate has landed on the roof of a uh, of a punk fashion model in New York City, and this alien feeds off the opiates produced at the by the human mind, human brain at the moment of orgasm. And hijinks ensue. I don't want to tell you anything more than that, but this is such a product of his time. If you want to know anything about the punk fashion underworld of of, of 1980s New York City, uh, it's just an amazing movie with an incredible soundtrack, which also Slaver Sukerman did. It stars Anne Carlisle playing both the male and female lead in the film. And it also has Paula Shepard from an old uh, 70s horror film called Alice Sweet Alice that I believe was Brooke Shields' screen debut i thought this was a lost film i had a, a dvd of it that didn't look so good i thought the negative was lost forever but vinegar syndrome uncovered it slava sukerman participated there's some great special features truly one of the great releases of a cult movie that i i saw at the seattle international film festival for the first time and i loved amazing to get this movie i can't recommend this highly enough liquid sky a lot of you are going to watch some of these movies that I'm going to talk about. First of all, I'll cop to the fact that you're going to look at these movies and go, Rob, what the fuck were you talking about? I couldn't even, I watched 10 minutes of this and I turned it off. Well, let me just say, this is not my problem. I'm just telling you things that I loved. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just hipping you to the stuff that's out there. And I hope you guys will take a deep dive and watch some of the, the amazing things that we're getting. Now I'm going to take, uh, those are actually came out the end of 2017. Put those over here. Now I'm going to talk about some of the things that came out in 2018. And first of all, Home 3D. Home 3D is alive and well, except in the United States. It's pretty much dead here. So if you want to get the great 3D titles that are still coming out on Blu-ray, you kind of have to go to the UK or sometimes Best Buy will do an exclusive or something. There's a few things like Ready Player One came out this year in 3D. I think Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom did. But you know what came out in 3D in the UK on Blu-ray? Black, Black, well, let's see, you can see it. Black Panther. Yes, one of the most successful uh, films of the year. A game changer as far as Hollywood is concerned. Man, is this a great 3D conversion. Get it from the UK. Uh, it is region free, I do believe. Uh, maybe it's not. Hang on. Let me check on that. Mm, maybe not. It might not be region free. So you have to have a multi-region player to play it. But 
Home 3D, I'm a big proponent of it. It looks great. It's awesome. And follow Black Panther up. Let's talk about Avengers Infinity War in 3D. Oh, yeah. You know, you can't get enough of this movie. Every time you watch it, it just puts a great big smile on your face. The UK disc is in 3D. And, you know, it's funny. If you watched Aquaman in the theaters, there's a huge list of, of credits of people that worked on the 3D conversion. So I hope to get Aquaman in 3D as well, which is pretty great. Now, Vinegar Syndrome that put out Liquid Sky also put out a movie that is near and dear to my heart. Because when I was first dating my girlfriend, Elizabeth, who has put up with a number of things for me, she's a wonderful woman, but she also deals with me showing her films that she might never have heard of, and she probably never wants to hear about them again after she's seen them. And one of those was an Australian exploitation movie called Body Melt. Now, Body Melt came out on DVD from a company called Vanguard a couple of years ago. It was terrible. The DVD was a transfer off of VHS because it was sort of a lost film. And uh, Elizabeth, to this day, never, uh, never, if there's an opportunity to arise where she can hold it against me that I made her watch this movie, she'll take it. Vinegar Syndrome. This year, Vinegar Syndrome released, not only did they release Body Melt, they released it in a beautiful special edition package with tons of extras. And let me tell you, God love Vinegar Syndrome for putting out Body Melt on Blu-ray. Now, here's the thing. You know, I don't think every movie is great, but everybody sets out to make a great movie. Uh, there's so much time and effort, and sometimes years are involved in making films. I go into every movie wanting to love it. I did not love Body Melt, nor would I say it's the greatest movie in the world, but it is a bunch of goofy fun. And if you want to see some exploitation horror from Down Under, from Australia, Body Melt is your thing. There's some incredible gore effects. It's kind of got a, a body horror slant. I mean, it's almost the comedic version of a, of a Cronenberg movie. Now, along those same lines, the UK's 88 films released one of my favorite movies. The Super, the super Inframan. Now, if you guys don't know The Super Inframan, it's kind of like a, the Hong Kong ripoff of Ultraman. It came out in, I think, 76 in America. Uh, as it says on the one sheet that we have hanging here in our house, Inframan is the man beyond bionics. And the villain, if you watch the American dub, the villainess, I should say, her name is Princess Dragon Mom. She's like Khaleesi, but the Asian version back in the mid uh, 70s. She was the original Dragon Mom before their, you know, Daenerys Targaryen was was flying on Drogon. Uh, Princess Dragon Mom. Let me tell you, Inframan, this movie, if you loved Aquaman and you go into it with that same kind of, uh, you're going to love this movie. Inframan rules. He rules. I love this movie so much. You should watch this. And if you hate it, look, if you hate it, don't blame me. As I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just steering you in the direction. There's all kinds of different movies here represented. You can watch whatever it is you want to watch. Uh, and yes, Gilbert did get a haircut. Uh, the next movie that came out, Criterion, released Andre Tarkovsky's seminal science fiction novel. Uh, some, pardon me, some seminal science fiction movie, Stalker. Stalker is, is based on a novel by the Strigatsky brothers, uh, Russian science fiction writers, Arkady and Boris Strigatsky, and it's based on their uh, novel Roadside Picnic. Here's the thing about Stalker. Here's the thing about all of... Andre Tarkovsky is one of the great masters of cinema, but most people, especially today, kids, now I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you what you're in for. You need to reset your minds because stalker can be like watching paint dry. It really can be. Uh, I think it's one of the great science fiction films ever made. Uh, Tarkov Tarkovsky made three uh, fantasy films. He made Solaris, the original Solaris, that's based on a novel by Polish science fiction writer Stanislaw Lem that was remade by Steven Soderbergh and produced by 
James Cameron. I really hope that Lightstorm Lightstorm has been remiss in getting The Abyss, True Lies, Solaris, and Catherine Bigelow's Strange Days out in high def, even though I own Strange Days because I have the German Blu-ray. I hope we see these films uh, released in the near future. But Criterion, they've released Solaris, they've released Andre Rublev, they've released other Tarkovsky films. But oh, his three his three great fantasy films are Solaris, Stalker, and his final film that he made while he was in exile in France, The Sacrifice, which is already on blue, which is a, a fantastic movie, basically about uh, a certain family, a certain patriarch of a family, perhaps assuming the weight of the world and, and maybe redeeming humanity at the end of time. Something like that. I don't want to spoil it for you. Watch it. This transfer is absolutely stunning. Uh, it's incredible. It's it's so... But remember, when you watch the films of Tarkovsky, you, you have to approach them with a, a different mindset. Uh, I learned this when I was going to the Seattle International Film Festival in the early 80s, late 70s, early, actually 1980 on, and I would see films from all over the world. I would get, a, my parents got me a full series pass, so I watched films from all over the world, and I very quickly learned that the pacing of movies was very different in countries, so I, I, I sort of would, I guess it was a meditative power that I taught myself. I don't know if it was a yoga thing, but I could go into a meditative state if I was bored to tears by a film, I would would sort of downshift my mind and be like, okay, it's not the film's problem that I'm bored. It's my problem. It's my shortcomings as an American and what I don't know about foreign cultures. So I would always try and sort of decelerate my own intellect, my own whatever you want to call it, and try and approach a film on its level and try and understand what it was trying to do. So Definitely Stalker is one of those films. Tarkovsky's movies are very challenging, but rewarding in the end, um, if you like those things. Now, the next movie is a movie that <laughs> is near and dear to my heart. Uh, uh, the UK company uh, 001 Films released it. It's been released uh, domestically before, but there's two different cuts of it, and they put both cuts on this, on this Blu-ray. It is the Thriller Roller Coaster with a great Lalo Schifrin score. Roller Coaster is about a terrorist, uh, a mad bomber, who is, well, for I won't tell you why, because I don't want to ruin the plot. He's he, he blows up amusement parks, and the film, the film opens with a roller coaster blown up, and uh, a lot of people die. And I saw this movie in Sense Around. It was one of the movies, one of the few movies released in Sense Around. Earthquake, of course, was the first. And Sense Around was this wacky gimmick where they would install a lot of low frequency bass speakers into uh, movie theaters. And so when something would happen, like when the earthquake happened in an Earthquake, it would rumble the seats. Why they released Roller Coaster in Sense Around, I don't know because the rumble of the roller coasters would only happen infrequently. But like when somebody would throw a ball at milk bottles in a, in the, in, in, in the, the, in an amusement park, uh, it would shake the theater. But I saw this movie four times when I was a kid. I love the idea of a terrorist blowing up roller coasters. And it was the very first time the end, the climax of the movie takes place at magic mountain where, uh, when I was working on Axanar, I would drive past Magic Mountain every day, and the Revolution, the roller coaster, the Revolution, which I think is still there, um, it was, it it takes place there. And George Siegel plays this investigator who I guess he's an insurance or he's a safety investigator, and you 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 just got to see it to believe it. But it's a '70s crime thriller. It's pretty good. Really enjoyed it. My next film, The Wachowskis Bound. Uh, if anyone's seen Bound, let me tell you, you you will thoroughly enjoy this movie. It is a it is a thriller. Uh, it stars Meg Tilly's uh, younger sister Jennifer, and uh, it is uh, it, it's a great it's a great thriller, and of course has very hot lesbian sex scenes in it, which is always welcome, as far as I'm concerned. And the Wachowskis did this, and it hasn't really been available much, and they've got their commentary and special features on it, and they haven't talked a lot about their movie-making process, but their commentary was great, and it was previously available on, uh, I think it was a Japanese Blu-ray, 
but it came out this year. You can get it. It's nice to have it. Now, uh, another one of my favorite, there are two guys, uh, Justin Benson and uh, Aaron Moorhead, who have become two of my favorite co-director genre filmmakers. And their film, their third feature, The Endless, came out this year. Now, The Endless, I would say, is, is the second in their shared universe movies. Uh, their first film was Resolution. And uh, before you watch The Endless, you have to watch Resolution first. If you buy the UK release of The Endless from uh, Arrow, Resolution is included in that package. I highly recommend getting that package. The domestic release only has The Endless in it. Uh, however, if you uh, if you want, uh, you know, you can get that. You can get Resolution and The Endless domestically here. They also made a a, a very interesting horror film called Spring. If you haven't seen that now, what I really like uh, when I was a kid, what I liked when I was a kid was was things that intrigued me from an intellectual standpoint. Like that's why I got into David Cronenberg films because his body horror movies were not just, you know, it wasn't just like some ghost in a mansion or Dracula in the mountains of Carpathia. There was something really strange going on in in our world today. A skin graft would lead to a woman developing a weird stinger in her armpit. And she needed to drink blood. And then that turned everyone whose blood she drank into crazy, rabid uh, people. And uh, they would have to bite you and things. And, and that was his film, of course, his second feature, Rabid, that starred, famously starred the, the, the porn actress Marilyn Chambers, which the Soska brothers, Soska brothers, pardon me, Soska sisters, I know them. They're delightful. I can't believe I said Soska brothers. I'm thinking Wachowski brothers, who are now sisters. The Soska sisters, they have remade Rabid. Uh, this year, which I can't wait to see. One of my favorite pieces of key art that was dropped was the poster for Rabid. If you check it out, it's on my Instagram page, RM Burnett. I'm RM Burnett on Instagram. Go check it out. It's a great poster. So anyway, The Endless, Justin Benson, Aaron Moorhead. This is a really intriguing film. Again, uh, if you stick with it, if your attention span is there, it'll be richly re rewarded. Now, uh, here's here's a film that came from Severin, another great uh, home video company that they released my beloved The Stuntman, Richard Rush's The Stuntman, one of my favorite movies about making movies, which came out a couple of years ago. They released, I believe it came out in 79 or 80. I'd have to consult, uh, eight, 1980. Uh, the Changeling with George C. Scott with this great O-ring. Uh, an incredible an incredible ghost story, one of the great first ghost stories. And it stars George C. Scott, who in his first horror turn, later famously he starred in The Exorcist 3, which is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's not on the level of The Exorcist, but it's an outstanding movie. You should all check it out. Uh, the fact that we have a beautiful transfer from Severn of this. They even made, here, here's another great thing about these uh, smaller video companies. Severn realized that they had left out certain sound effects that were on the surround channels. And they actually immediately corrected the situation. And they said, if you've bought our disc, uh, we'll send you out a new one. And they did. You know, I wrote them and I, I said, hey, man, they sent me a disc out. It was great. Good on Severin for putting this out. They, it's a beautiful release. Uh, all of these com uh, companies should be lauded for, the, the again, the Lord's work that they're doing, restoring these, these films, these classic movies that might, not a lot of people have seen nowadays because they weren't available in high depth, so they're not being run anywhere. And whenever they uh, uh, re-release them, it's really great to get these movies. Um, next on my list, uh, the great Japanese director, and I can't, let me have to look. Uh, Kiyoshi Kurosawa. I don't believe there's any relation uh, to the great Akira Kurosawa. Kiyoshi Kurosawa has made, uh, he made in my mind, one of the most disturbing, profoundly existentially disturbing horror movies I've ever seen called Pulse, uh, which also came out. Arrow put that out. It's a really hard disc to find. Track it down. A lot of, a lot of you are going to go, it wasn't disturbing to me. Well, it's not disturbing like oh disgusting or horrible things happen to human beings in this movie but there was something it was quietly disturbing on a very deep and existential level so check that movie out pulse but this his movie cure 
uh, came out from Eureka in the UK. Now, Cure is is a deceptively simple movie about a a cop going after a serial killer. Uh, it's again, it's a movie that sneaks up on you. It's an incredible, incredible uh, a movie, and to finally get it on Blu-ray, it was on a on my Blu-ray shelf. I have uh, DVDs that have yet to be released in high def, and I I love it when a day comes along where I get a release from somewhere around the world where a high def transfer or beautiful high def master has been made of a favorite film of mine that I can then, I take out the DVD and I get to slide in the Blu-ray. So, so good on, good on Eureka for, for releasing this. Uh, it's a great, great film and you guys should all check it out, especially if you like horror or serial killers or, or, or films that are filled with existential dread which many of uh, Kyushu Kurosawa's films are. Now I'm going to change <laughs> change gears a little bit. Kino, Kino Films, who who uh, released one of my. It's not. I didn't bring it here. I didn't. I don't know why. But Kino released <laughs> released Richard Rush, who directed the Stuntman, his last movie, Color of Night, with Bruce Willis, famously showing his his uh, his manhood, flopping around in a pool love scene with Jane Marsh. They released Kino released. Color of Night this year with a fantastic audio commentary from 90, 89 year old Richard Rush. Check it out. Get this stuff. It's amazing. What else did they release? They released Stephen Summers' first feature, Deep Rising. <laughs> now, I'm not a big fan of Stephen Summers. You know, his use of CG, it's a little wacky. You know, he made the Mummy movies, uh, he made a G.I. Joe movie, but Deep Rising. This movie is, as Dan Schweiger would say, it's a monster movie. It's about monsters. Uh, I love this movie. It is so much fun. It defines great B-movie, and it has a hell of an ending. And to get a, a beautifully produced Blu-ray package from Kino, God love them, and God love them for putting out The Color of Night. And actually, I, I, it's not here yet because I didn't buy it. I was waiting for the double box set. But one of the, the most uh, important video releases of the year is Kino's uh, release of The Outer Limits. The original Outer Limits, Kino has now put out both seasons one and two of The Outer Limits. You guys, one of the most influential TV shows of all time. Even as a child, it was one of my favorite things. Talk about a show with good monsters. And of course, Harlan Ellison, Demon with the Glass Hand, the inspiration of The Terminator was from The Outer Limits. You gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get, uh, you gotta get that movie because it's, I mean, you got to get the series. Get get the Outer Limits. It's incredible. Uh, even though I don't have it here because, honestly, I haven't bought it yet because I'm waiting for both seasons to come out as one box because ine inevitably it will. So um, uh, here's another great film, Francis Ford Coppola, who directed three of my favorite movies of all time. The, of course, Godfather 1, 2, and I love Godfather 3, even though it's not, it doesn't reach those same heights. Um, his film, Tucker, that he made with George Lucas, Tucker, A Man in His Dream, starring Academy Award winner Jeff Bridges. He didn't win the Academy Award for this movie, but uh, this movie is near and dear to my heart because it's about Preston Tucker, who back in the day wanted to make a, a perfect car. He thought Detroit, the big automakers, were not putting out the best cars they could, so he designed his dream car, and he was he was like the Willy Wonka of, of he was a big dreamer, and he had a loving family and he had kids and everything. And he, he, he created his dream. And of course, big auto, big De Detroit, Detroit's big auto makers were able to use their political influence and their big money to basically shut him down. And uh, it's a real shame, but the movie is a great testament to American ingenuity and the power of family and, and really the power of dreams. And it's a fantastic, fantastic film. It's beautifully made, beautifully realized, and it was great. I mean, th this disc cost nothing. You know, it's it's it, it's like ten bucks or something. And Lionsgate put this out, which you know, they, Lionsgate put out Apocalypse Now. Dustin Dean, a friend of mine who used to work for me, uh, they put out this incredible Blu-ray package of Apocalypse Now, and they've been working with Coppola and American Zoetrope. So it's great to see Tucker and Man in His Dream out. It's like ten bucks. I mean, that's that's not even two double Jamesons. I mean, I, everybody should buy this. Uh, it's a great film. Buy it. Love it. Fantastic release. 
Here's another great release that came out this year. Uh, another Criterion release, Terrence Malick's Tree of Life. Uh, Tree of Life, again, like a Tarkovsky movie, not for everyone's taste, but this film, uh, it's a reimagining of his original release. He basically went in and Criterion helped him out and he added almost an hour to the film. Basically, this is a tone poem about what it's like to be a, really a human being. And uh, I didn't, I didn't particularly love the first version of Tree of Life, but this version of Tree of Life is astonishing. And I, I watched this here. Nobody was home. And I actually sat down and watched this movie uh, by myself because I wanted to see what was the how, how did the redone version work. It was amazing. <laughs> Dark Hawk Mark. I just looked up and I'm looking at your chats. He says, if Threads isn't on your list, I'll riot. Well, you know what? I didn't bring it here in my stack, but I own it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, back in the mid '80s, by the way, Threads, the the Blu-ray release of Threads that came out, and I I'm, I don't know who released it, but it's 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 on my Blu-ray shelf in the next room. Threads is one of the most singularly horrifying and depressing movies you'll ever watch. It was basically the British answer to the uh, uh, the day after which also came out on Blu-ray this year. Nicholas Meyer's Day After, after Star Trek II, he directed a, a movie called The Day After in the mid-80s that was all about what would happen, a realistic portrayal of what would happen if a nuclear war occurred and how would it affect a Kansas town. Well, Threads, I think it's a far superior film that not only deals with what would happen to Sheffield, England in the aftermath of a nuclear war, but what happens to Sheffield, England years later? And it ends on perhaps the most singularly horrifying and depressing note of any film I've ever seen. So, uh, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> Sharp Shouter 07 says, I forgot about Gina Gershon. Yes, Gina Gershon also stars in Bound. I'm sorry, I've, I, I, you know, I, I don't work off a script. I'm speaking off the cuff, so I'm trying to keep all this information. No excuse. But yes, Gina Gershon, who is, I mean, Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly together, kind of incendiary. Sorry, I forgot uh, about mentioning. And, and Joey Pants, Joe Panigliano, uh, is also in, inbound. Great film. Uh, anyway, so, but Threads, I, I didn't, it's not in the stack here, but that also came out, limited edition. It's great. Get it. Although, I warn you all, it's not a very good time at the movies, but it makes a really interesting double bill with The Day After, which also came out this year. So if you want to watch, uh, um, if you are younger viewers and you weren't alive during the, the height of the Cold War in the 80s when everyone thought we were going to get blown up one day in a nuclear holocaust, uh, now everybody thinks nuclear war is survivable because we don't have mutually assured discussion d destruction. You know, maybe North Korea could hit the west coast of America. Who knows? We don't know. We'll just take out a few cities. But it used to be nuclear war would be the end of us all. And the day after and threads are a great double feature. But, you know, get some Xanax or, or get some Klonopin because you're going to be so depressed when you get to the end of these movies that you're, you're going to drink yourself to death like Nicolas Cage and leaving Las Vegas. Or you're going to be really happy that the Cold War is over and you should do everything to prevent another one from happening. Anyway, uh, Shout Factory. Shout Factory has put out a ton of great stuff this year. Uh, they put out John Landis's Into the Night with Jeff Goldblum, which I never thought I would ever see back on. I had the Laserdisc. I never had the DVD, but I do have the Shout Select. Shout, Shout Factory has been putting out great horror titles and great genre titles. They're, they put out Buckaroo Banzai, of course. But they put out a movie near and dear to my heart, which is Martha Coolidge's 1983 Valley Girl. Um, they even have this, this great weird painted, painted cover because the key art for Valley Girl always kind of sucked. And the only thing worse than the key art of Valley Girl was what MGM did in 2003 for the 20th anniversary of the movie, which I, uh, myself, the great Greg Carson, and Dave Parker produced the special features for. Which were which went out of print very very quickly. So this disc brought back all of the special features that I produced through my company Ludovico Technique with Dave Parker, who you might have seen on my live chat 
with The Hills Run Red. Before we made The Hills Run Red, Dave and I were producing DVD special features, and we did them for Valley Girl along with MGM at the time, MGM's Greg Carson. And this disc brings back all of our special features. It has a beautiful transfer of the film. Stunning transfer of Valley Girl, so kudos to Shout for doing that. And they brought back all of our special features. And then Greg Carson went back and created new special features, sort of in the same vein of what we did. He even took some of the, we did all interviews with the entire cast, except Deborah Foreman. And Deborah Foreman does not appear on this disc either. The, the, the titular Valley Girl herself, Deborah Foreman, who I, I see all of her Facebook posting. She lives in Big Bear. Somebody should just have gone up, oops, sorry about that, tracked her down and said, come on, Debbie, what's up, babe? Participate in the special features. But everyone else did. So I was happy, I was happy to see Valley Girl get re-released by Shout and to see my special features come back because why not? I want to perpetuate my own myth and be self-serving. And I just want you all to be going, oh, I didn't know Rob worked on Valley Girl. Yes, I did. Ludovico Technique. Watch the documentary 20 totally tubular years later, dude. It's back. You can watch it. But it was, of course, created in standard depth. So you're watching uh, an up res. Now, one of the great things about the modern age is we now have a new video standard 4K. And it's when they remaster, when they go back and they, they touch the original negative and the original elements and they make a new 4K remaster of films, it is glorious. It is wonderful. I live for it to be able to bring a film home and see the grain. Like all you people who like, oh, it doesn't look like a Pixar movie on home video. Come on, man photochemical movies were made photochemically, uh, you're going to see grain. Like you watch Ghostbusters or Close Encounters. I listen to all these pixel pushers online going, he doesn't, eh, eh, eh. Uh, that's me channeling my inner John Schnepp. He doesn't look as good as it's supposed to look. Dude, they're doing the best they can. When you're watching optically printed visual effects, you're going to see a little bit more grain. Anyway, the fact that we're getting, the studios are going back into the vaults they're remastering movies in 4K, which means you're going to get copies of films that are going to look better, especially if they're, you know, uh, uh, HDR 10 and Dolby Vision. I mean, this stuff is dope. I mean, it's amazing. And what did we get this year in support of the release of Shane Black's The Predator? We got this. We got the 4K Predator collection, three movie collection of Predator. Uh, the second Predator, Predator 2, and of course, Predators that was directed by Robert Rodriguez. Or maybe it wasn't directed by Robert Rodriguez. It was produced by him. No, I think it was directed by him. I don't know. I forget. I can't remember everything off the cuff. Off the, off the cuff. So, But anyway, the important thing is the first Predator Blu-ray that 20th Century Fox released sucked. It was full of uh, digital video noise reduction, DVNR. Terrible. No detail, no grain patterns. Terrible. So... If nothing else, even if you don't like the other two films, even though I think there's a lot of joy to be found in both Predator 2 and Predators, having an original Predator version on home video in 4K that looks as good as it looks, it's a it's a huge upgrade. Uh, it's great. It's great. Now, the 4K releases of the year just kept on coming. Uh, another great release was this, my second Wachowski Brothers film on my list, The Matrix. All three of The Matrix films have come out, but I'm just going to include the first Matrix because it was mind-blowing. Seeing this in 4K, uh, it finally looks the way it always looked too video-esque for me on home video, even though there's been some great Blu-ray releases in the past, and there's a lot of special features that are in that great Matrix box set that are not on this disc. However, the transfer... The 4K transfer of this movie, it hasn't looked so good since you saw it in the theater in 99. If you love The Matrix, as I do, I think it's one of the finest science fiction films of the last 20 years. This 4K version is incredible. The transfer is incredible. I first saw this at uh, Bill Hunt, who famously does the digital bits. He showed it to me uh, at his house on his giant screen. The first time I saw this transfer, I'm like, oh my God. This is amazing. You can buy the Matrix films individually if you want, or you can get them in a box set. I highly recommend uh, this 4K transfer of the Matrix. Uh, and speaking along those lines, Warner Home Entertainment, because they have their own transfer facility, MPI, they put out this Superman the Movie. The 40th anniversary of Christopher Reeve's original Superman the Movie from 1978 
I love this 4K transfer. I know my friend Zolly Becker will complain about this. I know, I understand, but I think it looks terrific. It's great to have a new transfer of Superman the movie. It is not, however, the extended version of Superman or the TV extended, extended version of Superman that was also released this year on Blu-ray, uh, which is fine. You know, um, it's amazing. It is a fantastic transfer of the film. And, and what strikes me every time I go back and watch Superman, especially the first 40 minutes, is just it's it's unparalleled in in uh, it, it's just an amazing, beautiful uh, evocation of the entire character, the whole history of Superman. It, it's amazing. Now, uh, Canal Plus, the great Canal Plus, a, a French company has has dipped uh, put they didn't just put their feet into 4K, they dived in wholeheartedly, and they've been putting out these four disc sets. Uh, a 4K version of the film, the Blu-ray version of the film, DVD version or a special features disc, and then the soundtrack. And the their first release of this was Michael Cimino's The Deer Hunter, another great release uh, that you should all pick up if you like that film. But what they've done for all of you genre fans out there is the horror master himself. They have released three of his beloved films, three in a four-disc 4K set. Uh, the first of these that came out was The Fog. That's right. Shout Factory did put out a great version of The Fog, but they released. Look at how thick this is. You know, it's almost biblical. You, know, you put it on your shelf next to your Bible, it's almost the same size. Uh, it was great to get The Fog on 4K. It looks beautiful. Now, again, you pixel pushers, you're going to be like, well, you know, it doesn't look like uh, Finding Nemo. No, it can't because it's a film that came out in 1980. And they shot it at night, and they didn't have high speed films uh, like they do, or high speed lenses. So there's darkness, and when you see certain visual effects, yes, they're grainy, but that's the way the movie is. You know, you don't want to go in and you don't want to go in and like erase that stuff because then you get what the Predator looked like. That somebody, some idiot, once thought, "Oh, this looks good," because we have to make it look good on your 4K TV because people won't buy it. No, people aren't stupid. They want to get good looking. They want the best version of the movie that can exist. This was a low budget film made in 1980. Wasn't it great to get? Now I'm going to go in chronological order, but not release order. What Canal Plus released and which came out the latest? That's right, Snake Plissken, baby. Snake Plissken in 4K. That's what I'm talking about. Snake Plissken in 4K. This was awesome. I mean, again, you know, what can we say about Escape from New York? We can't talk about Escape from New York more. And what's really good about these releases is Daniel Griffith and his company, Ballyhoo Films, he's coming back and he's doing, you know, he can't always get the participation of, of all the actors. A lot of them aren't here anymore. But he gets film historians and experts like my friend Dan Schweiger, who talks about Munsters. Uh, to talk about the soundtracks, and there is the soundtrack, the great Carpenter soundtrack. Uh, one of the great things about the last couple of years is the is the Carpenter Renaissance. Instead of the Renaissance, the Carpenter Renaissance that's happened, where John Carpenter's music, he's touring the world, playing his his music with his son Cody and their band. Who, who would have thought that would have ever happened? But how awesome is that? Another release that I didn't include here. I don't have it. You can go to their website. I think it's the Storm King website. I'm not sure. You can buy, I don't own this yet. I haven't bought this yet, but I want it. There's a Blu-ray of John Carpenter performing his music live. I mean, come on. But anyway, Escape from New York. And not to be outdone, the third of the Canal Plus John Carpenter releases of the year, They Live. That's right. Rowdy, Robbie, Rowdy Roddy Piper, rest in peace. John Carpenter is the second film of his three-film Alive deal, of which the third film was never made. There goes Gilbert into the kitchen. Uh, they Live. Now, They Live has become more, uh, what a prophetic movie that's become. We're 30 years, it's 30 years later, and I'm convinced that the David Icke lizard people really are controlling humanity because what else would explain for all the wackiness that's that's happening? There's so much going on in the world that's good now. Uh, there's some, people are more liberated than they've ever been, despite the fact everybody's screaming and yelling at each other. Humanity's in a better state than they've ever been. Uh, there's more people working, uh, more, more, the diversity of people in all walks of life has been expanding exponentially, and yet everyone's angry. How can you be angry when you get all three of these releases on 4K Blu-ray? And I thought I was going to be depressed because Prince of Darkness, which is one of my favorite John Carpenter films, 
uh, I thought it wasn't coming out. And they, they even put out a regular Blu-ray with this same artwork and not as a 4K thing. Well, guess what, kids? In February of 2019, there is going to be a four-disc set of Prince of Darkness, one of my favorite Carpenter movies, coming out from Canal Plus. Buy it. Love it. These are very much worth getting. They're very much worth the money. They're not that expensive for what they are. Incredible. Incredible. Which brings me to my last. By the way, I'm going to open. I am going to answer all your questions in the chat. I'm going to go back up and start asking questions. But this brings me to the end. My favorite video release of the year, not to be outdone. Can you guess what it is? Drum roll. The 4K release of my man Stan, Stanley Kubrick, the great Stanley Kubrick, 2001, A Space Odyssey in four fucking K. Can you fucking believe that shit? Sorry, kids, I had to swear because I have to add an extra emphasis emphasis on how great this release is. By the way, I got mine early on. They had a replication problem because, by the way, no one's replicating any discs in America anymore. All the plants have apparently closed, so the one replication facility in Mexico is overloaded. You know, I mean, I think if it were me, I would allow all the Mexican immigrants that work at the plant that is replicating 4K discs in Mexico to come to America and open a new 4K replication facility and keep physical media alive. That's just me. This disc is essential. I have owned 2001 in on VHS on multiple laser, laser discs. When I moved to California in the summer of 1988 to go to school at USC, Criterion, their offices were on the beach in Santa Monica. And I, I was a huge Laserdisc fan back then, and I moved to California, and I actually got on my bike. I called them up one day. I said, hey, man, they put out the CAV version of 2001, which is still – that was actually the last transfer of 2001 that I believe Kubrick ever supervised. And um, it was it was an amazing transfer, but it was split over four Laserdisc sides or six Laserdisc sides, five. Um, I pedaled – I went down. I rode my bike with my backpack and I rode my bike to the Criterion offices and picked up my CAV laser disc of 2001 in the summer of 1988. And it was glorious. So to have this uh, out on 4k is amazing. And there was all this people wondered, is it going to look like Christopher Nolan's version? No, it does not look like the 70 millimeter version that Christopher Nolan supervised that came out in theaters earlier this year first of all even with the best intentions you can't make a movie today look like a film looked with a 70 millimeter print in 1968 because those kinds of film stocks they just don't exist anymore so no matter what you do it's not going to look exactly the way uh it looked back then no matter what you do as much as you want it to look that way um the, the famous Leon Vitale, who was, of course, Lord Bullington in Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, another Criterion disc, which came out last year, which you all should buy. Uh, he, of course, oversaw the transfer of 2001 for 4K. It was all based on his notes. And if you get a chance, if you want to watch a very sad story about a very great man, watch Film Worker on Netflix, which is a story of, of Leon Vitale, who famously, after he was in Barry Lyndon as Lord Bullington, decided to dedicate his life as an apprentice to the master uh, that Stanley Kubrick is. So those are my favorite. Look, there's a lot of other great video releases, like the Ingmar Bergman box set, which sold out immediately. It was like 300 bucks. I couldn't get it. Uh, you know, I was cash poor at the time. You can't. I can't always buy Hot Toys figures and model kits, and there's something coming out every day of the week because we live in a, a beautiful time. But these are my favorite discs of the year. There's so many more that come out, but I, you know, I, I feel fortunate that we live in a world where this kind of physical media is still being produced and physical media, the studios want it all to go away. They want it all to be streaming. I get it, but physical media, man, there's nothing better when you crank up your home theater with a really great transfer on a big screen. And look, I want to put Atmos in my bedroom, which I haven't done yet, but I'm going to one day. I'll probably never leave. They'll just hook an, up an IV to my arm, and Elizabeth will just bring me in uh, Jameson and coffee and salmon and pasta, and I'll just spend the rest of my life hooked up to an IV and watch these great transfers. So uh, that is uh, those are my that's my list for the year. Now I'm going to go back up to the top of this chat 
and I'm going to hang out with you guys for a while, and we're going to talk about what you had to think about everything I've said today. So we're, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going back up to the chats. So uh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go down here. Does anybody else love the maniacal stills of Rob's face for these YouTube videos? Well, I'm glad you say that. I mean, you know, it, there's a, there's a, it's a hard thing. If you like my maniacal face posts as the thumbnails for these videos, please comment and say, yes, there's going to be some people that are like, you know, Rob, that's not professional, but you know what? The fact that you said that you like my maniacal face uh, postings as my thumbnails for these videos is all I need to know because I am going to uh, celebrate my enthusiasm and my enthusiasm usually entails me having some kind of maniacal expression on my face. At one, it's out of disbelief. Out of two, two, it's out of sheer joy. And it, it, three, it's how much longer am I going to live my life to, to get this awesomeness before getting hit by a bus and tragically having my life cut short before I could, I wasn't able to see the next awesome thing. So that's when I go like, yeah, that's because life is awesome. Uh, Vesna says, uh, <laughs> I look like a kid in a candy factory and I love it. I am a kid in a candy factory. Life, life itself right now, if you grew up as a geek like I did, who was interested in model kits who is interested in action figures and home video and video games and superhero movies. We live in the best time that there ever was. Like, I don't even understand. Yeah, I hate Star Trek Discovery, and I, I bag on it. But it's pretty great that a Star Trek show is getting made now, and it's pretty great people like it. Hopefully, the Picard show will be better, or the animated Star Trek show will be better. Heck, even the second season of Discovery might be better. The fact is, we're getting some new Star Trek. And maybe some of it will be awesome. And so uh, I'm really happy uh, about the time I'm living in right now because everything I ever wanted as a child is coming to us. Uh, books. Uh, it, it's amazing. If you're a science fiction, fantasy, horror freak like I am, we're getting so much great stuff on every single level. I, I can't even begin to not. You can't. Why people are angry, I don't get it. Why are you arguing over The Last Jedi? Why not? The fact that whether you hated Last Jedi or not, it got made and people are like, ah, it's just corporate product. <laughs> you know how hard it is to make a movie? You know, if they want to make corporate product, it's easy to like build a theme park ride and make more money that way. They're taking a big risk. You might not like The Last Jedi, but rather than be like, I don't like it. Why don't you take a step back and sit down and, and think to yourselves, why is The Last Jedi the way it is? Why? Don't just get angry about it. Think about it. Watch it a couple times. Read what Ryan Johnson was was going for. Maybe talk to some fellow fans before you go on the internet going. <laughs> anyway, look, it's great we're getting what we're getting. We're getting episode nine. Look, I don't even like J.J. Abrams because J.J. Abrams famously would say, I didn't like Star Trek when I was growing up. I was never a Star Trek fan. So, of course, you're directing two Star Trek movies. Now, for someone like myself who's a lifelong Star Trek fan, this kind of bummed me out. Like, why did they turn the keys to the Star Trek kingdom over to somebody who was a person who wasn't a fan? You know, and, and went on every interview when Star Trek 09 came out and said, I never really, really liked Star Trek when I was a kid. Well, that's too bad. Anyway, let's go down. And uh, 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 Valak69 says, you know what? I think, oh, I don't have my glasses. I can't, they're not in front of me. Oh, we're truly blessed with awesome comic stuff. Yes, we are. We are. Uh <clears throat> I'm glad. Oh, uh, Sketchcraft says, I'm so glad I'm able to get 3D Blu rays through Amazon UK. Thanks for the heads up on that, Rob. Well, you are welcome. And isn't it cool that you can still get three, 3D uh, Blu rays through the UK? You can also get them in other countries. Italy did a version of Bernardo Bertolucci's The Last Emperor in 3D. Like, what? But they did. I have it. It's pretty great. Uh, Leo McHenry says, "Hey Robert, greeting from Dublin, Ireland." Well, since you mentioned that, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna. I'll admit something to you. This is Jameson, and I'm gonna take a sip. I haven't done this the whole talk. The whole talk. So, hmm. uh, Vesna asks, "Did Gilbert get a new haircut?" Yes, I think I. I. I already said that. He looks hairless. Well, he gets knotted up. He's a poodle, and we we just we we shaved him. We shaved him. 
Uh, Bill Hunt, the digital bits Bill Hunt, who I talked about earlier, uh, whose first book I'm in the middle of, uh, which is fantastic. So congratulations on my friend Bill Hunt. You want to talk about awesome things that happen? I've known Bill Hunt for years. He used to have me on his San Diego Comic-Con panels and things like that. He finished his first novel, a lifelong dream of his. He's been writing the bits for 20 years, and he and I worked on the Axnar screenplay together. He rewrote a script for the feature-length version of Axanar. He took a script that was never finished and, you know, I gave him notes, but it was really him. He 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 did a page one rewrite on it. It was great. If you want, if you want it, contact me. I'll send you the script. Uh, but but he wrote his first novel uh, this year and it's gonna be coming out soon. And I, I keep talking about it. I tweeted about it yesterday and I, I'm reading it. And it's great. I uh, can't wait to have it. It hasn't been published yet. It's it, we're I'm a beta reader. It's like a beta tester for a video game, but I'm reading it in case there's any problems, but it's outstanding. Uh, Grimash says, I'm still collecting DVDs. Hello, Sir Rob. Good for you, but why are you collecting DVDs? 4K, dude. Blu-rays. What's up? But I understand. People collect VHS tapes, which I don't understand because both VHS and DVD were NTSC video formats or PAL or CCAM if you're in Europe. And uh, Blu-rays are six times better and blue uh, 4Ks are way beyond that. So... Uh, Sharpshooter07 says, Rob, are you still a fan of Laserdisc? I will always be a fan of Laserdisc. I still have about 100. I don't watch them anymore because they're NTSC video. They look terrible compared to what we get now. And I understand the nostalgia. My Laserdisc player still works. I understand the nostalgia for old formats, but the transfer technology and the things that we have now, there's not one Laserdisc, although people say the AC3 sound soundtracks are better, they're less compressed. Look, NTSC video to me is dead. If I have to have it, if I have to watch something on, on DVD, I will because it might only be out on DVD. As I told you, I was able to replace the cure, my DVD of it with the cure of uh, the, the Blu-ray from Eureka in the UK. That's cool, but I don't want NTSC video. I never wanted it when we all we had it. It was NTSC video. It was terrible. But I still have about 100 Laserdiscs in the garage, including my awesome chrome box set of Dawn of the Dead, which even has a map of the Monroeville Mall in it. So that's great. Um, let's see. Uh, Stalker is overrated. Evil Father said Stalker is overrated. Perhaps. Again, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. As I said, I don't think it's overrated. I think that there's a lot to love about Stalker. And... Uh, uh, you do say I prefer, uh, Evil Father goes on to say, I prefer his other movies like The Mirror and Nostalgia, both great films. I love The Mirror and Nostalgia, they're, 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 or Nostalgia. They're great, great movies. And I understand that. They're Stalker, when I first saw Stalker, it was, it was like putting needles in my eyes. It was so slow. And I, uh, I, it was hard to deal with. But once, I didn't know that going into it, but once you know that, uh, I, I like it. Uh, Grimash says, I'm familiar with Stanislaw Lem, as you should be. Uh, he recently passed away, but he wrote a lot of, a lot of great science fiction. Uh, and he, he was writing it during, you know, Poland was still under the occupation. Or it was still being run by the Soviet Union. So the fact that he actually, you know what, if you guys want to have a really interesting time, look up Soviet sci-fi movies on YouTube there's a lot of really interesting films that I've never seen before that I would love to see that you guys should check out um, because there's some wacky stuff that looks looks awesome and that I've never seen. Uh, Sharpshooter07 says, Strange Days was weird. Was it? I think it was a pretty prophetic movie. I loved it. came out in 1995. It was uh, We loved it at Sci-Fi Universe Magazine at the time. Uh, I, I still love Strange Days. I love... I love Lenny Nero, played by Ray Fiennes, and Angela Bassett kicks ass, and Juliette Lewis is in the movie, and she sings, and the great Michael Wincott. Michael Wincott. Any movie is made better by Michael Wincott. He plays Philo Gant, the evil record producer. Glenn Plummer plays, uh, I, I forget uh, the name of the rapper in that movie. I want to say KRS-One, but that's a real rapper. Um, it's something like that. Great cast. Loved it. Evil Father says Roller Coaster looks like my type of B movie. It is, and it's surprisingly good. Like I went back and saw it again. I hadn't seen it in a long time. I think you guys will dig it. Um, Tarko uh, Evil Father said Tarkovsky made something beyond the cinema. It was a mysterious and sacred thing. Well, I don't know if it was beyond cinema. I think he just stretched the possibilities of cinema. I mean, his 
his movies, and some people would say he was following in the tradition of Igmar Bergman, uh, were they're very internal. You know, he he brought he brought the way people think. He changed cinema. He changed the mode of watching cinema. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, nobody, no one says haven't seen Bound in a very long time. Now you can get the Blu-ray and watch it, which is great. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, anyway, oh, when I eventually get 4K, I'm going to grab Bram Stoker's Dracula first, one of my favorite films to look at. Gorgeous movie. I don't think entire it entirely works, but yes, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, Bram, pardon me, Bram Stoker's Dracula came out on 4K this year. Another Francis Ford Coppola movie with his with the the in camera effects famously designed by his son Roman Coppola. Uh, 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 and by the way, that uh, Dracula, Coppola's Dracula, two of my favorite very favorite film scores of all time were done by the Polish composer Wojciech Kilar, and he did Dracula and he did um, Roman Polanski's The Ninth Gate starring Johnny Depp, another favorite film of mine that people don't like very much, but I, I really like it. And they're going to release an expanded, I think, La La Land records. I'm not sure, but they're releasing Wojciech Kilar's expanded score of Dracula if they haven't already. Got to pick that up. Uh, Dark Hawk Mark says, love the release of The 7-Ups on Blu-ray in the USA. Yes, The 7-Ups is, is another cop thriller starring Roy Scheider. Great to see The 7-Up. Great car chase in there, too. Uh, that was great to see that come out this year. Again, whatever you want, it's coming out. We live in these fantastic times, everyone. Really, really great stuff. Uh, Adam Douglas says, this might sound dumb, but the 2003 Lion King won one half DVD. It was the first time I'd ever seen a special feature that helped you create the best lighting settings for your TV. Adam, that is not, that's not bad. Why? And I, I agree with you. I mean, they, you know, 20th century Fox on the, I produced the special features for X-Men 1.5 and X2. And they had a THX optimizer on those discs that helped people set up their TVs, which is great because most people don't have their TVs set up great. Or, or you, you got to take the time. If you're going to get a 4k, uh, a set, you know, Take the time to calibrate it and be sure to turn motion smoothing off. You know, it should be playing at 60 hertz uh, or whatever. It just motion smoothing is terrible. You don't want to be adding artificial frames to your movies. And that's what motion smoothing does. It's a horrible blight on humanity. I know there are larger problems like starving children and injustice and uh, all kinds of, of horrible oppression of people all around the world. But I don't have to deal with those on a daily basis. I have to deal with motion smoothing, and it's a horrible blight, and it's a pox on mankind. I don't even know why anybody would build it into a TV. It was wrongheaded and stupid from the get-go, and whoever said it was something they should do in the, cor uh, in, the, in the corporate boardrooms of whatever company came up with that horror, one day they'll have their whatever is coming to them, it will come to them. Um, Vesna, Vesna says she loved the color of night. Haven't seen it in a long time. You know what? I love color of night too. A lot of people would say it's monumentally stupid, but, uh, I loved it. It was certainly controversial. It was released by a division of Disney, uh, Hollywood pictures when it came out. Richard Rush have made the stuntman who I loved, who also made freebie in the bean, which was also released by Warner archive on blu-ray i don't know if it was last year or this year but you can get that film it's amazing that these movies exist that they're on blu-ray and the color of night has both the theatrical release and richard rush's um uh, uh he likes of course his director's cut which is much better to me it's like a jallo movie it's like an argento jallo movie even though the, the twist is apparent to anybody who's watching the mo movie um Let's see. Uh, oh, Keaton Card eighty nine says Tucker is a great movie. I think it is. Nobody want. Uh, nobody. No one said they like Tucker. Um, Dark Hawk Mark says Tucker's digital code redeems in four K HDR. I did not know that. That's uh, that's awesome. Lionsgate. Here's another thing I should say. Lionsgate. Good on Lionsgate. They they didn't bring any of their four K discs, but they have just started releasing. Uh, 4k discs and they put out evil dead one and evil dead two this year on 4k which by the way should have been on my list let's just put them on there i just didn't put them here i don't yet own evil dead 4k or evil dead two many of you might know i have a credit on army of darkness i was a makeup effects production assistant on army of darkness so that whole series i love the whole series um they're out on 4k as the evil dead would say join us 
So that's great. But here's what I want. Here's what I want in 2019. I want Lionsgate to go do a 4K transfer of Paul Verhoeven's Basic Instinct. Blitzway just put out a, a quarter scale statue of Catherine Trammell from that movie that I dearly want that I don't own yet. Uh, I want Basic Instinct. Uh, Die Hard, which was shot by the great Jan de Bont, also came out on 4K this year, which should have been on my list, but it didn't surprise me that Die Hard came out on 4K. I knew it would come out. But Basic Instinct has never, ever, ever had a good video transfer on home video. It's always looked gauzy because it's really hard to duplicate a lot of those, those lenses. And uh, Die Hard, by the way, looks incredible on 4K. Another film... Jan Damont also shot Basic Instinct. He also he shot famously shot Die Hard, but it's really hard to replicate those 80s anamorphic lenses and the filters. And please give me Basic Instinct, please Lionsgate, put it out. You gave us a Evil Dead one and two, but give us Basic Instinct. Um, Ruth B says R and B, you're awesome. Ruth B, thank you. Uh, you're awesome too. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. Um, Nerfherder21 says he won an Arrow Video Hall a few months, including The Endless. Very interesting film. I hope uh, before you watch The Endless, you got to see Resolution because we watched Resolution here. And when The Endless turned out to be a sequel, I was kind of, my mind was kind of blown. I loved it. But Arrow Video, Arrow Video, uh, there's, there's a couple of companies that deserve shout outs. Uh, Arrow Video is out of the UK, Indicator which are taking a lot of, of uh, Sony titles and doing new transfers of them. Indicator is doing incredible work, incredible work. Uh, they're putting out, they put out a Harryhausen box set, a Hammer Horror, Hammer Films box set. They're doing some incredible work. Warner Archive uh, are doing the Lord's work. I mean, they're, these smaller video companies have assumed the mantle as studios seem to have lost any interest in their own catalog, their own legacy, all of these smaller companies are coming in and filling the void. So good on them for doing so. Uh, amazing work that people are doing. But indicators, they're great and they're region free. So get those Blu-rays. Um, Byron Broomhead said, Sheffield is where I'm originally from. Byron, what did you think of Threads when you first saw it? Did you see it? Man, your poor town in that movie did not fare well. Uh, I think it. I think it put me off. Going ever wanting to go to Sheffield. Justin Toner says, Rob, for Christmas, I got the new Blu-ray of Signs of the Lambs from the Criterion Collection. Can't wait to see the new remaster on. It's great remaster. Again, Criterion, you know, it's funny. Criterion put movies out on Laserdisc like Signs of the Lambs, and I've been waiting to get their new versions. They put out uh, Signs of the Lambs before, but their new version is a remaster. I have that. It's great. Uh, another great, again, there's so many great discs, especially genre. If you like science fiction, fantasy, and horror, we live people in a golden age. Uh, although I will say this, uh, I am waiting for Criterion to release David Cronenberg's Crash on Blu-ray. Where's Crash? Where's my Crash Blu-ray? Why don't I have it? Uh, one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Cronenberg films. Not for everyone. It's basically about. Uh, here, here's what Crash is about. It's based on J.G. Ballard's novel of the same name. The premise of Crash is like the greatest. It's about a bunch of cultists who believe that the greatest sexual experience they can have is to be in a car crash and have their bodies penetrated by the, the glass and the metal uh, that, that occurs when you're in a car accident. And it goes from there. And Holly Hunter and James Spader and Ilias Kateas are in this film. And it's wacky. Howard Shore, who did the score for Lord of the Rings, did the score. It's an amazing score. It's a very interesting movie that's all about uh, how, does, how does humanity with the onslaught of technology reconcile how are we beings of flesh and blood and existing in this mechanical technological world you know it's sort of I, I think it'll be looked back on as one of the first transhuman stories about human beings altering themselves through uh technology coming down the pike it's not out there i wish it was uh grimash says schneppy schnepp schnepp r.i.p yes sir I agree with you. I miss John Schnepp every day. As I've said, one of the great things, the thing I love most about John Schnepp is he loved everyone else's creativity. It didn't matter what it was. Everyone else's creativity delighted him and it didn't threaten him in any way, which I thought was a wonderful thing about John Schnepp. And he was delighted by whether somebody painted a picture, did their own comics, made their own computer games, sculpted an action figure. 
he loved it all. And, and that's one of the reasons we got along is because we loved all this stuff. As you can say, as you look, as someone pointed out, my thumbnails will to show you how enthusiastic I am about all of this stuff. And John Schnepp was equally as enthusiastic and I miss him every day. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Anthony Gonzalez says, I love Predator 2. Some Paxton going on full wild Bill Paxton. I do too. You know, Predator 2 was cut down. There were two movies. Stephen Hopkins directed Predator 2. And there were two movies that were Silver Pictures productions, uh, co-productions. The Inve Adventures of Ford Fairlane and Predator 2 both got heavily edited. They both were like a half an hour longer. And I wish that the original versions of those films would come out because I thought Predator 2, I saw an earlier version of it and I loved it. I still like it a lot. It's not great. It's a good B movie. It's not as good as Predator, which also has its problem. Predator is by no means a perfect film. It's the movie John McTiernan directed before Die Hard. He had written and directed a movie called Nomads with Pierce Brosnan. Then he made, which is really interesting, by the way, it, it's a weird it, ghost story about the Inuit Eskimo ghosts that live in LA. It's wacky. I like it a lot. Pierce Brosnan stars in it, but McTiernan wrote and directed that film, which you should check out. But he did Nomads, he did Predator, and then he made the 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 one-two punch of Die Hard and Hunt for Red October, two of the most powerhouse uh, 80s studio uh, product. Uh, unbelievable. I can't get enough of those. And by the way, lest we forget, uh, even though I, I I haven't got it yet because they haven't released the single discs out, but Hunt for Red October did get a 4K release this year. It came out in the five disc Jack Ryan collection from Paramount. Good on them, uh, fantastic. And, and if I can complain about something, they dropped one of my favorite movies of all time. It was my favorite movie when I was five years old. Is the original Byron Haskin directed War of the Worlds from 1953 got released on iTunes in 4K, but no one put out a physical disc. Like what? What? I mean, come on, War of the Worlds, the original War of the Worlds, still one of the greatest movies, greatest science fiction films ever made. Still has the greatest aliens. Still has the greatest sound effects. The 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 manta ray tripod they're tripod vehicles they're not they don't fly they're on tripods electromagnetic tripods but tripods nonetheless can only be had on itunes what is up with that people why don't i have a hard copy of war of the worlds in 4k i don't know do you know can you explain it to me come on paramount home video before somebody else buys you i don't understand why why your studio why why the studio does not give love to its catalog titles anyway um Vesna says, I bought myself not a movie, but a book, Men Who Hate Women, from Stieg Larsson in the U.S., named The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Well, that's good. You bought that book. Did you get all three of the, 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 the trilogy? Um, if you guys like The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, you've got to get the Swedish versions that were, were originally made for Swedish television. Get the Swedish Blu-rays, because they're extended versions. They're each a half an hour longer. I mean, nothing touches the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo movie. Um, Man, do I with Numi Rapace as Elizabeth Salander. That movie kicks ass. Uh, and I love the extended version. Get the trilogy on Blu-ray. We of course got The Girl in the Spider's Web, where where another author, you know, Stieg Larson famously died. He never saw the worldwide success of his trilogy, but you can get the movies on Blu-ray. You should. Matrix, download all the 4K films to my brain. Brinsley, I would love it. If, if you could download movies to your brain, but you know what? There's I like the smell of the plastic, of the packaging. You take it off and you slide it out, you open it up, and there's a there's a tactile thing about putting the disc in. You you shut it down, you watch them, or you turn it on, you watch the menu come up. I love all that. I love the ritualistic nature of it. We all need our rituals, and I like my ritual of uh of uh of doing these things. Oh, Keaton Carr 89 says, I'm sorry, but I've never liked the hazy visuals of Jeffrey Unsworth Superman for shame, for shame. You know, it's, I, I'm walking down King's landing, shame, shame, but that's okay. You know what? Everyone has their personal preferences. I can understand that, especially if you didn't grow up with it, but it was, it was a choice. Um, I think it adds to the, rather than Ang Lee's comic book frames that he used for the Hulk. I think there's something, there's something otherworldly about Jeffrey Unsworth's uh, visuals, and I, I, man, I, I dig them. I dig them. But you know, teach, teach their own. 
Uh, Grimash says Superman is a classic. Uh, Brinsley says, love me some John Carpenter. Yes, Justin Toner says, love John Carpenter. Brinsley says, John Carpenter plus Kurt Russell equals good times. I mean, they've worked together four times. They did Elvis, the TV movie Elvis. They did John Carpenter's The Thing, which, where's that 4K disc? We got Christine. Where's The Thing, Universal? Hook me up. I know Shout did a great release. Arrow did a great release. That new, They did a 4K remaster, so it exists. So where's the 4K disc of The Thing? Which, by the way, somebody put a Merry Christmas from us, you know, uh, of all the cast of The Thing out. It was very funny. Uh, I want that. Uh, let's see. Prince of Darkness. Brinsley says Prince of Darkness is actually still, still scary for me. Yes, it should be scary because one day Lisa Blount, who's passed away, is going to come out of a decrepit church in downtown LA and take over the world. At least I'd like to believe that that happens. Uh, Brinsley says, Star sorry, swearing, laugh out loud. I want that 4K copy of 2001. Well, you can't have mine. You cannot have mine. You can come pry it out of my cold, dead fingers when I no longer exist. But uh, uh, oh, Lithgow Movie says, would you like to see 2061 and 3001 made? For those of you who don't know, Arthur C. Clarke, who developed the story of 2001 with Stanley Kubrick, then later wrote the novel of 2001. But in the early 80s, he also wrote uh, the first of three sequels. He wrote 2010 Odyssey 2, which I think they should go back and readapt because Peter Himes' 1984 2010 is I like the movie a lot, but it's it's hugely dated and changes he made to the book. Um, if they didn't make those changes, it wouldn't be as dated. And Cure Delay is still alive, so you could actually go remake 2010. I think it would be, be an awesome, awesome, awesome remake. Um, it'd be astonishing to see, especially if they had the consciousness of Dave Bowman diving in and out of the Jovian clouds and seeing those weird creatures. That it'd be great. But then the further sequels. Uh, were 2061 and then 3001 The Final Odyssey where Frank Poole who is famously left drifting in space apparently dead uh, in 2001 he's recovered a thousand years later because the vacuum of space preserved him and they were able to wake him up and the first 50 pages of 3001 is hugely entertaining so uh, yeah I would love to see that come out uh, um, man there's lots of there's lots of uh, questions here. I, I just zipped ahead. Uh, let me go back. Man, there's a lot of questions. I can't get to all these questions. <laughs> um, uh, wow, that's a lot of laser disc, Brinsley says. Laugh out loud. Theodore, I can't even, I can't even pronounce all this. I don't know. Theodoros Colocotronis Ogeros Trau Moria. Is that Greek? I hope. I hope. Uh, I hope I, I massacred your name. I'm sorry. Please don't hold it against me. Um, uh, wish Mezco would make 2000. Well, I'll tell you something about 2001 stuff. Somebody has allowed, somebody from the Kubrick estate has allowed 2001 to be marketed because we're getting, uh, I don't know if you can see it over there. Uh, Mobius did a, they're doing 2001 models. They did the Discovery. They did the Orion Clipper. They're putting out the one-eighth scale pod from 2001. I'm like, what? what? I want that my whole life. I'm getting it. It's amazing. They've also allowed Mezco to make Clockwork Orange figures. I mean, I, Alex DeLarge is one of my favorite characters in a movie, but he's repugnant. He's a horrible, he's a rapist, murderer, amoral sociopath. But now you can buy an action figure of him. So that's kind of weird. I don't know if Kubrick would have liked that. Um, hacker Canon memes just says, no, 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 no. That doesn't really add to the conversation. Hack Canon. Um, Bill Hunt says Batman, the animated series on Blu-ray from Ar Warner archive. Also the thing from another world, two great releases, by the way, getting Batman, the animated series on Blu-ray. Amazing. It finally came out. I have not, again, I haven't picked that up yet. I can't wait to get that. And thing from another world, uh, finally came out. Also the original invasion of the body snatchers was released and they've been trying to work on that. It's supposed to come out in 2006. And it finally came out this year. So that's cool. Uh, Brian Eng says, did you like the idea of a shared 007 universe with the spinoff for Jinx and one for Wylin? Yes, that would have been great. Now we have Ho Hobbs and Shaw. They've spun off the Fast and the Furious movies. Let's spin off James Bond movies. Um, I, I, I'm in. I'm in. Twilight Zone or Outer Limits? Brinsley says, well, here's the thing. They're very different. 
But first of all, the Twilight Zone, everything you need to know about storytelling is inherent in, I think there's 157 episodes of the Twilight Zone or something. Not all of them. I mean, the fourth, the hour long season, hour long episodes of the fourth season, not so good. But the fifth season, yeah. But the Twilight Zone is amazing and it looks incredible on Blu ray. But The Outer Limits is a different kind of a show. The great thing is, we live in a world where you don't have to choose because you can get them both. And I highly recommend you getting them both on Blu ray because they are amazing. Um, uh, Repta King says, damn, I have my 4K TV, but I live in an apartment, so I can't really have badass speakers yet. Here's what you do. Get a thunderous sound system and then invite your neighbors over when you first try it out. Me remember, invite the people up above and below you and right next to you. And if you live in a big apartment complex, if you're, you're sharing a back wall, invite them too. So think three-dimensionally when you do this. Show them a double bill. Crank the sound up. Ply them with beer and pizza. And tell them they're welcome to come over whenever you are showing movies. And if you have a problem with how loud it is, please, before calling the police or your landlord, just come and knock on my door or pound on the wall, and I'll turn it down. And get those speakers, son. Get those speakers. Uh, Bill Barkley says, hi, Robert. Hi, Bill. How are you? Uh, uh, Repta King says, have you heard or seen the Star Wars 4K77? Yes. I have it right on my computer. Um, for those of you wondering, there are, are different factions, different people uh, that are making different. There's the negative one group that has made a 4K Star Wars transfer off. It looks like a print. And then there are the despecialized editions that I don't think are 4K yet. But, you know, when Disney finally acquires Fox, they would do well to get themselves. They need to put out the original versions of Star Wars in 4K because everyone else is doing it. So, I mean, they should. And. Those Blu-rays that came out from Fox of the original trilogy are the, the timing, the color timing is not good. Uh, go online. The people that are doing it, the fan versions of Star Wars online look better than the Blu-rays. So check that out. Uh, then there's a, I don't even understand what, what all of this is. Um, uh, my bad goy, my bad goy says, did you know Jews push degeneracy they own hollywood weinstein spacey spielberg it goes on forever i know but you know i'll tell you something uh you're wrong and i don't know what else to tell you uh, if that's what you're getting out of this chat i apologize uh remember it's the jews that brought you great 4k releases on <laughs> on, on hdr blu-ray so there's always a there's always an upside to everything so yeah wow this this quickly degenerated well on that note I'm sorry that this has degenerated into this. It's really too bad. Uh, I think it's time now that the the crazy, weird spammers and hackers have joined this conversation, that I'm going to cut this short. It's too bad that this happens. So, you know, it's time for me to go. And uh, I hope you enjoy this chat. I hope you enjoy the great video releases of 2018. I'll be back tomorrow talking about something else. And I'm sorry that the chat board turned into a ridiculous racist rant of a bunch of crazy uh, idiots who can't even spell. Like, if you're going to insult me, at least spell. Spell correctly. I'd appreciate it. So anyway, enjoy your home video releases. Enjoy those Blu-rays. Enjoy those 4Ks. Please subscribe. Please uh, write down below and tell me what what uh, titles you liked and what you'd like to have me talk about in the future. And let's celebrate the things that we love. And remember, everybody you meet has a story to tell that you haven't heard yet. So let's listen. All right. Talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.